Uh, this is Kamar Imam, and I'm thrilled to have with me Mr. Izaz Ahmed Chaudhry. Uh, he has uh, served as uh, in the Pakistani Foreign Service for 37 years, um, and he has also served as a Foreign Secretary of Pakistan for over three years. Uh, Ambassador Saab, uh, thank you very much for your time for the NHS Media. Thank you for having me, Kamar Imam. Sir, sir, you recently wrote an article in the Dawn, and uh, you have basically spoken. The name of the article was Shifting Sands. Uh, uh, and uh, you have highlighted so many points there, but I wanted to ask you uh, and uh, that how you are looking uh, this Pakistan-India relations, particularly uh, since you have said that uh, uh, there is uh, there is a cost for the miscommunication. So you are basically saying the prolonged communication gap with Pakistan will not be cost-free for India's uh, long-term prosperity. How do you justify and how you make sure make your this point, sir? You see, um, for the last six and a half years, uh, there is practically no dialogue at any level between India and Pakistan, which is somewhat um, unusual for uh, two major states, two nuclear armed states who are neighbors. Um, whenever the countries uh, don't interact with each other, misunderstandings grow. And uh, uh, there is always, uh, you know, room for some miscalculation. And therefore, it is ex absolutely essential that uh, both countries should review uh, their present approach and engage in a dialogue. Pakistan has sent a very clear signal uh, several times to India, but it appears that the Indian leadership uh, at this time uh, is not keen to engage with Pakistan. I have uh, interacted with some uh, Indians of uh, <clears throat> opinion makers and opinion builders, and they uh, think that at this time, India's attention is focused more on uh, Indo-Pacific strategy, on relations with China, and uh, on building India's economy uh, to the level of $5 trillion. They're also busy with G20, and therefore Pakistan is not on the radar of uh, Indian leadership. My own uh, sense is uh, that if India were to raise its profile uh, globally and regionally, it has to have uh, a peaceful, a quiet, uh, a friendly uh, neighborhood uh, and not a turbulent neighborhood, not a turbulent relationship with its neighbors. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, there will always be instability uh, in the region, and that may not be good for any country of the, uh, of the region, including uh, India. Then there is also the bigger picture, uh, which is that U.S. Uh, has chosen India as the strategic partner, no doubt about it. Pakistan has also moved closer to China through um, economic uh, uh, programs of cooperation, but also uh, both countries uh, enjoy each other's trust. Now, the question is whether uh, India would want to sharpen uh, such alignments in South Asia. I don't think it will be for the good of the region or for India itself. Thirdly, I think the, the, the objective of creating a Hindu Rashtra, a Hindu state within uh, India, and there are so many Indians uh, and non-resident Indians who are speaking about it. They are worried about the commotion that may happen uh, in India if the minorities are marginalized, especially Muslims and Christians. And my sense is that uh, the policy uh, towards Pakistan being pursued by India falls somewhere uh, in this larger domestic uh, dynamic. Uh, so I, on balance, when I say that it will not be cost-free for India, this communication gap, I think it is out of goodness for the region, out of goodness for India and Pakistan, uh, because the people of the two countries cannot afford uh, to have a prolonged confrontation. And if uh, I've also heard uh, and read some articles, uh, recently I read an article in uh, 
ORF uh, saying that India would like to marginalize Pakistan or isolate Pakistan. And it is, uh, I don't think a country of Pakistan's size and Pakistan's capabilities can be marginalized. I think this is a flawed strategy. So that's why my, my suggestion in this article has been that it would be better uh, for India, for Pakistan, for the region as a whole, if both countries stay engaged and discover the common ground on which they can work together. So, Ambassador Sir, it's time and again, Pakistan is saying that, oh, this is Hindu Rashtra, these are the Hindus who are dominating. So, if India is a democracy like Pakistan, so what if uh, Pakistan wants to be an Islamic country and India wants to be an Hindu state? So, don't you think this is uh, this argument doesn't hold a value and we should leave this to the people of India, whether they decide they want to live in a Hindu state or they want to live in a secular state? I fully agree with you. I fully agree with you because uh, it's the at the end of the day, it's the people of uh, India, it's the leadership of India, which has to make its own choices. What I was referring to was uh, the uh, statements uh, coming from several uh, important uh, uh, non-resident Indians who fear that uh, this kind of uh, approach, this kind of uh, majoritarian, communitarian approach that India is following uh, would uh, uh, take India or drift India away from its pluralism and secularism and other credentials that its founders had taught. Now, it's for Indians to make a choice whether they still want to create a Hindu Rashtra, it's for them. My only worry is with regard to Pakistan and the approach and policy towards Pakistan and to an extent about uh, the situation in occupied Kashmir and the, and the Muslim minorities in India. So I think it is in that sense one feels that if there is a commotion in India, of course, it's going to affect the whole region and affect Pakistan as well. Other than that, it's, of course, their country and their cause. So, Ambassador Saab, this question with, with Pakistan is requesting or asking or suggesting uh, time and again to India that they should talk. And, for example, in your article, uh, you have mentioned that uh, 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 Pakistan initiated Kartarpur Corridor. Uh, Pakistan was responsible enough in the uh, Indian strike on Balakot. Uh, but uh, India, uh, and in particularly as well in the India's Brahmos missile, uh, which landed in Pakistan. But India is only interested in LOC, uh, 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 the, the, the back-channeling talks which uh, happened. So how do you see that? Don't you think this is a weakness of Pakistan? That time and again, this is Pakistan which is requesting, suggesting India... Uh, and we should give a time to India and uh, Pakistan should uh, uh, prosperous economically and should have political stability. Uh, other than that, they are not going to come back to talk to us. Don't you think this is this will have a more solid ground rather than suggesting and asking them? Because uh, there are some elements in India, they believe that uh, we should let ma Pakistan make mistakes uh, because they are on the wrong track in terms of political instability, financial uncertainty, rising uh, resurgence of terrorism. So how do you see this, sir? Yeah, I, um, I have no uh, difference of opinion uh, from you on this matter. Uh, Pakistan should focus internally. Uh, but at the same time, if Pakistan is making peace overtures towards its eastern neighbor, I don't think it is a sign of weakness. I think it is a sign of confidence. It's a sign of maturity. It's a sign of responsibility that Pakistan wants to have peaceful coexistence with India, that Pakistan wants to have peaceful, normalized, friendly, and cooperative relations with India, good neighborly relations with India. What's so weak about it? Nothing. I think it's the right policy to take. But if India does not want to engage with Pakistan, of course, there will be no, no peace process. Uh, but that does not mean that Pakistan should shun uh, its desire for peace. Pakistan should always, we are not begging for a dialogue with India, not at all. The only thing Pakistan is, is doing is that we say that we will continue to take the kind of initiatives we have recently taken. We know that India has not reciprocated on any of them. And yet we think that this is the right approach and Pakistan should continue to follow that. And that's the length and breadth of it. As far as the internal situation is concerned, I fully, fully agree with you that Pakistan should put his own house in order, his political house in order, his economic house in order, uh, gather strength, and then negotiate from a position of strength. But while we do so, 
we must always remain committed to a peaceful South Asia. So, Ambassador Sir, you have spoken about the camp politics uh, in South Asia, uh, and you have uh, mentioned that uh, uh, we should the South Asia should not be become a ground for uh, for the camp politics. Uh, do you believe uh, there's there are elements in the West and in India they believe that Pakistan is is fully uh, siding with the Chinese? They have put all their eggs in the Chinese basket. Uh, and as you mentioned, that India is getting closer with the India has become closer and a strategic partner with the Americans. So, don't you think that um, uh, this is something very natural? This is to happen, or do you think that uh, the, the regional countries can play a role? Uh, for instance, the Indians are saying that we are neutral because we are getting energy from Russia while making the Americans annoyed. Uh, so, we are not uh, that much into the camp politics. So, how 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 what do you make of this, sir? Yeah, this is an approach uh, that uh, Pakistan has followed and also India, uh, that we want to have our strategic autonomy. I know that Pakistan wants to have balanced relations with all major powers, with China, with US, with Russia, with others as well. And it is my sense that India too wants to maintain its strategic autonomy and wants to have uh, relations with all powers um, uh, in their own right. So there is, I think that is that is pretty good, and I I think both countries are following that approach, if, uh, and uh, I don't think anybody can take exception to that. What I am referring to is that if alignments in South Asia get sharpened, and if Pakistan and India are not talking to each other, and instead relying on the intervention or uh, intercession of some third state or third party um, in uh, making India and Pakistan sit and talk. That means that these two countries, Pakistan and India, are giving our, giving up our own space of bilateral bilateralism and, and inviting or giving the space to a third country, which, of course, will use it as a leverage against both countries. And that is why I believe that uh, Pakistan and India are, would be much better off if they stay engaged rather than giving leaving the space to third countries who come and then become a bridge between India and Pakistan. I think the, these two countries should behave as a mature nation as mature nations and should talk to each other directly uh, about all the issues that are on the table. Well, Ambassador Sahib, you have mentioned about the third country, but most recently it was Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif who requested the Emiratis that they should come and help us in having talks with India. So India is time and again saying that we are not, we don't want the third party intervention, even the former President Donald Trump was snubbed by the Indian Foreign Office. So uh, ha letting this third party is Pakistan's choice. This is not coming from India. Or do you think that uh, this 2003 ceasefire agreement, the, the, the formalization or the normalization of the 2003 ceasefire agreement was basically a third party act? You see, uh, there have been instances where the United States and some other powers also have been making efforts to uh, make both countries uh, manage their uh, conflicts and uh, and and find some kind of solution to to their bilateral issues. There's no doubt about it. But my view, which I have expressed in this, is uh, is is that we should not be going in that direction. In my view, uh, both nations should talk to each other directly and should try to address and resolve these issues. I I am not uh, in favor of giving the space. Uh, to uh, third countries in that sense. Yes, if they want to nudge both countries uh, towards uh, mm, uh, towards talking to each other, there's no harm in it. Uh, but I, I don't think India and Pakistan should really uh, leave it for the third countries. to uh, Look, for example, in February 2019, when uh, <clears throat> India carried out a strike on Balakot, uh, and when we read Secretary Pompeo, it is probably India either with approached uh, uh, the U.S. or the U.S. itself took the initiative. But Secretary Pompeo says that uh, they resolved uh, 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 or they played a role in coming down uh, um, and not so that there is no nuclear showdown. Uh, uh, I think Pakistan and India should be able to talk to, talk to each other. Uh, that would be much more productive, provided they they, do, they engage in a meaningful talk. 
but unfortunately it has not happened because in one party namely india is simply not ready simply not talking to pakistan and thinks that it can marginalize and isolate pakistan which i believe is a flawed strategy and gives more space to, uh, to third parties and others to intervene in uh, in in matters between pakistan and india uh, so mr sir uh, this is an election year in pakistan and the next year is an election year in india uh, so in this these circumstances we have we have recently seen that uh, uh, the, the two foreign ministers dr jay shankar and bilawal bhutto exchanged hot words in new york and they have been target lamenting each other so do you think that there is a possibility particularly for any kind of initiative particularly in this next one year you see um, on the uh, hot words exchange i have always believed and you i have written an article there uh, on war of words i believe that um, uh, hostile rhetoric should be eschewed should not be undertaken i think it unnecessarily raises tensions and and it resolves nothing that's my my view maybe in the short term uh, some points are gained domestic audience is also uh, satisfied uh, but in the medium to long term uh, mutual hostile rhetoric is not good i see that indian external affairs minister is always harping on the mantra of pakistan being a epicenter of terrorism i think that was what provoked foreign minister bilawal bhutto to <clears throat> to respond uh, so i think it's important uh, that uh, both countries should not go uh, down down that path as far as the elections in pakistan this year and elections in india next year if uh, if uh, we have stable governments on in both countries and both muster enough political uh, will to to talk to each other then i do see a possibility and i have identified uh, two major issues one is terrorism uh, the other uh, is uh, jammu and kashmir dispute and on terrorism i have already indicated that pakistan has done enough in fact a lot and now now pakistan feels that there are actually footprints uh, and finger fingerprints uh, uh, on uh, from across the border on the incidents of terrorism inside pakistan so this subject needs to be really talked about because i believe it should be viewed as a common enemy and the second subject jammu and kashmir dispute um, i know the positions are quite entrenched uh, however i believe that on occasions the two countries have talked uh, uh, and expressed resolve to find a solution and one such occasion was 4.4 formula in 2007 and i think that profile, that formula uh, can be revisited uh, it has the potential for further negotiation and with with adaptation whatever is required uh, that gives more comfort to both sides i think uh, there will be a possibility uh, for the two countries to engage and resolve this long standing dispute okay so mr ambassador this is the last question to you so uh, you have also spoken about the some out of the box thinking uh, in your article so what do you think that uh, india is all ready or will will uh, will what 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 out of box thinking can india suggest uh, to us and what out of box thinking we can suggest to india so what do you make of this argument please well you see <clears throat> there are uh, a number of peace constituencies that one can work on uh and the easiest and the low hanging fruit of course is the bilateral trade and i know that much of bilateral trade is occurring through dubai which is costly for the consumers of both countries uh, and the traders of both countries and therefore i think one can always focus on that without costing much climate change is a common challenge for the whole of south asia and i think that's another agenda on which both countries should engage um, the water issues and recently we saw india issuing notices and i think it is important for india and pakistan to realize that water is a very very sensitive issue i'm sure for both countries and therefore i think a regular dialogue a proper political dialogue in addition to uh, the dialogue at the uh, uh, permanent uh, commission for indus waters uh should also be undertaken and then finally uh, on these issues of terrorism and jammu and kashmir dispute which i have explained that we both should be so there is there is a, a, a i think there is a minimal agenda which is available for both countries uh, 
uh, and both will be will, will benefit and not to not to forget uh, uh, people to people contacts especially uh, relig religious tourism uh, um, and 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 you know making it easy for divided families to meet each other i think these are this is a pretty wholesome uh, agenda which will favor not only pakistan but also india so india has to rise above whatever uh, present policy they have adopted to see the larger picture and the broader benefits that would accrue from a good neighborly relations with pakistan Thank you very much, Ambassador Azad Chaudhry, uh, for speaking with the NHS Media. Thank you, sir. Thank you.